This is gonna be very interesting. That's gonna be our first free for all match on this channel after a very long time. It's a 1v1v1v1 video on the map Udun and may the best player win because now there is no teammate there is not only one single opponent we have potentially three opponents they can team up against you which can lead into lots of flames and discussions but also to fiesta games and i know you at least enjoy the fiesta games as much as i do and for that reason i wish you lots of fun watching this video at the bottom right side we have the mordo player fox top right we have the rohan player nero Top left, we have the Gondor player Necromancer. And at the bottom left, we have another Gondor player, Bibelini. So we have two Gondors, one Rohan, and only one Mordor, which means only one potential target for all these people with balls. We cannot even blame them, because they can only attack the Mordor player over and over again, because that's the easiest target. You don't have to crush a wall, you don't have to destroy a gate, you can just enter whenever, <clears throat> whenever you want to. They get to see lots of peasants from this Rohan player. And also Smeagol. There is this creep in the middle of the map. Udun, also a map we have not seen many times on this channel before. So it's a typical free-for-all match. A free-for-all map rather. And this Gondor player is trying to creep. I mean, I, I really enjoy the free-for-all games the most. Because, you know, you have to rely on yourself. But you also, you also have to be outsmarting your opponent, you know. Take a fight which can favor you, but the golden rule in free for all is to participate in many battles as in you know in, as in many battles as you potentially can, because the power point advantage you will get from them is gonna be crucial for your victory. So if you just sit in your base and camp, and you will have one power point and a guy will summon Balrog on you, you know what I'm saying? Or a guy will summon eagles on you or EUD on you. For that reason, fight non-stop. Lose. Recruit, revive, fight, fight, fight. Mordor has double orc pit. Nope, he doesn't. He has only one orc pit. But he has orcs everywhere. He was also able to creep the layer in the middle of the map. He has a level 4 orc warrior. Remember, with level 3, they will turn automatically into the black orcs. And once you go black, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I don't want to I don't wanna end the sentence, actually. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so Hobbit is level 3, though. That's pretty good. Dealing hella damage, also level 3 soldier. Soldiers obviously stronger than orcs. But this map is looking kind of weird though, not gonna lie. I mean, it's a unique design to the map. I like this magma, which kind of makes it like a like a gladiator arena on, on, the, on the center of the map. But I just don't like the design of that, you know? With Eom up on the field from the Rohan player. That's the Rohan player Nero. And his goal is later on to, you know... Uh, get Eoma to level 4 for the Horse Lord leadership. Oh, Mary is not gonna make it out alive. In the meantime, we have a battle for this creep at the bottom side. Mordor player is gonna commit to that with the level 3 orcs. Gollum, even Smeagol is on the business. And the creep will be easily taken. Another level 3. So level 4 and level 3 orcs. It would be amazing if you can save them. Because then later on you can combine them with your uh, units. And make like easy, strong... Um, combos, you know, but uh, Ilma is here, maybe we can get experience, beautiful trample. Making the 360, but trampling even more soldiers, making it quite easy for him to get to rank 4. He's gonna use the spear throw, the poor peregrine took, is gonna be taken down, and the soldiers will be slaughtered by the horse lord of Rohan. If also Eowyn, his sister, we have two brothers here, and two siblings here. Who is more powerful? The Gondor brothers or the, or the Rohan siblings? Of course, the Gondor brothers. Especially in a, in a fight. Because of Faramir's warning arrow. And the ability of Boromir to knock it down. You cannot really fight against that. But Eowyn and Eoma have much more different purposes. So you cannot really compare their strength. Because there are many situations in which Eoma and Eowyn can add much more to the table. Compared to Faramir and Boromir. But in a row battle, they can't. And now the, the uncle is also there. Three Rohan heroes dying against a troll creep. Never mind. Eowyn will say, I will kill you if you touch him. And Fox has been defeated already. So this murder player left the game. Probably he felt himself um, attacked multiple times from multiple different uh, sides. Now it's going to be a 1v1v1 situation. But there is one 
impressive, I mean, important golden rule in free for alls. And the rule is, if one of your opponent gets defeated, you are not allowed to capture his castle. You can capture all the settlements through, but not the castle, which would give the player who does that endless amount of, um, uh, see it, endless amount of advantage. And for that reason, it's, you know, kind of forbidden. If you do that, they will never play with you again. And also, in the arena, you can now play free for all matches too. It's amazing. If Boromir upon the field, rank 5. So this Gondor player is planning to go for the for the Gandalf, it looks like. Because he has a full base, but not going for any units. Uh, Boromir and Faramir, only units he got. But they will keep chasing those knights of Gondor over and over again. Also, Faramir is following, following up. This Rohan is going to get incredible strong very soon. Going for Armory and Stable simultaneously. And going for the Rohirrim and later on potentially and most likely to the Rohirrim Arches too. So the power points as mentioned before at the beginning of the game are going to be the key to victory for every single player including in this game. We have uh, the green Gondor player Bivolini. He has around about two power points collected. We'll go for Gan of the Grey. Missing a quarter amount of uh, power points to turn him into the Gan of the White. But he should be getting that. You know, it's not a big deal. Necromancer, the Gondor player at the top left side. He has one and a half power points collected. He needs a bit more compared to his opponent. But he also has not even nearly the money for that. So he needs to save around about 5,000, you know. And Nero has heal and draft. And, you know, he was playing most of the time with the heroes. And couldn't collect too many power points until now. But again, one big fight. And all of that can be changed. So now when we talk about the row um, faction power in free for alls Rowan is definitely the stronger army in long terms. Ooh. Beautiful stun. What a fine hit. And yeah, he's trying to find power points for Ganaf the White. Needs only two more two more kills. One or two more horses. And he should get it. And also level 4 Eoma. Ooh, catch with the lightning sword. And that's gonna turn him into the Ganaf the White. And he's gonna look much more serious now. And much more deadly, much more powerful. Because a wizard is never lit. Armory, heavy armor purchased, forge blades purchased, missing only the banner, that's about to be changed very soon. Rohirrim are glowing, shining bright like a diamond, due to the double leadership they will get from the Rohan heroes, Theorin and also Elma. And this Rohirrim is going to be incredible strong. Now you can, because your Elma is level 5, you can spear throw over and over again, and whenever you do that, you put your Theorin next to him. And he is not missing a lot of experience either, so he will get to the glorious charge very very soon. One arrow has been used, Faramir looking to show his quality, nearly rank 4. And this kind of is going to be painful until he isn't. And when is the time it's going to be not painful anymore? When Rohan has the powerful tools with like 3-4 battalions of Rohirrim archers to deal with him. The host player of this game is also the Gondor player. It means his kind of should be in a good spot. Uh, on host, you know, you have much more easier time also with your healing time. You know, when you use heal spell from your spell book, the timing is super important, right? right Where is the Ganav actually? I see only Boromir and Faramir. Oh, he is here. So we need to uh, follow Ganav. And Gandalf writes to Isengard. Seeking. Um, Saruman's cancel. And yeah, until you can't, you have no fire arrows, you cannot really fight against this guy. He's gonna use Easter Light and farm power points. That's what Gandalf is famous for, right? He's a power point farming machine. And all Rohan has to do, or can do, is to disengage from him over and over again. Because he knows the second he stops, there is gonna be a Visa Plus, which can. Which has the potential to wipe out your entire army. But while this is happening, look at the minimap. The other Gondor player is taking literally every single settlement down on the map. And also potentially going to be able to win this fight. And I'm assuming, yeah, he also has the power points to turn his Gan of the Grey into the Gan of the White. And talking about the Gan of the White, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Now we have not only one wizard, but two wizards in total. And again, it's a... Why, why is it so dark here? I mean, I can click on this. But the mountain I cannot see, but I can go into the darkness. Maybe that is the this is the place of Sarim, Sauron, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the army glow is kind of crazy. And also, Eowyn's spear is super underrated, dealing hella damage to the heroes, by the way, including Gandalf. So, should not be underestimated. 
And there is another Ganav, so you can always get into a bad timing in which you try to fight against Rohan and the other gun Ganav from the other player comes to flank you. So you need to choose your battles wisely. Super important. So Rohan is fighting for the map control. Um, he can still get stronger, by the way. The one way of getting stronger is first of all the Glorious Charge, which he already unlocked. But with level 5, the King's Weaver can be used over and over again to give him to give the Rohirrim Arches some levels too. But later on, you can also recruit Aragorn for more greater damage leadership. Rohirrim Arches are not about to be tanks. They are about to raw damage power. This guy is going for the Barracks and uh, Siege Works simultaneously. The plan is to get some Tower Guards upon the field. To protect the trebuchet, you know. And this Gondor is playing it a bit more slow. You wanna go for the ultimate lead game build, and that's why he wanna go for the. Ooh, hold on a second. He wanna go for the market, please. Oh, this can be quite dangerous, though. This potentially is one of the first free for alls in the arena. Arena um, didn't have the option to play free for alls, ranked free for alls in the in the past. It's super new to the arena. So you can also give it a shot by downloading the BFME launcher from the description down below, you know? It gives you the option and the chance to play every BFME game and also mod online with your friends or with strangers through the matchmaking system. And we have uh, hundreds of players, by the way, around all skill level. So you will find op opponents which are close to your skill level. So there is hope. A fool's hope, as Ganna would like to say. Oh, somebody died. Who died? I heard somebody crying. Did Farami die? Yes, he died, actually. I don't know where he died, but he died. Um, you cannot really approach the Rohirrim army when your heal is on cooldown. That's super risky because they have, like, crazy burst damage. They will burst through you in a second. You won't even see that coming. I mean, knowing that this army is way too powerful, Gondor is trying to disengage until he will have the, you know, required army to fight, fight against that. But this Gondor is kind of uh, being a little bit slow. This Gondor will be there much, much faster. He will have very soon the, the workshop, <coughs> sorry for my voice, the workshop level 2 for the Firestone and also some Tower Guards will follow up eventually. Ooh, you want to go for the Blast? But he can't. He just can't. Oh my god, Glorious Charge is gonna make them super, super strong. They won't die to the Blast, as you have seen in this scenario. Um, fighting against that, even in the land. Ooh, what a fine catch with the Lightning Sword. Ganav is, uh, you know, being the Pikachu over there. Pika Pika, or Ganav Ganav. Be careful. Ooh, kind of sniping. Spear throw, spear throw from the siblings. And I like the way that this Rohan is playing, you know. He is focusing the stuff he can. He knows he can kill. He could, of course, go for Gandalf. But the thing about Gandalf is, when he used the Lightning Sword and also his Wizard Plus, he will be useless for the next 45 seconds. His auto attacks don't do damage. So once he is done with his abilities, you don't really need to... Ooh, but he needs to be careful there. He's trying to damage him now. Easter will be used. Oh, he's gonna use heal. Bubble. Good damage. Oh my god, that's gonna be close. Imagine Rohan would be lurking around areas like this, you know? But this Rohan is getting stronger and stronger. Going for Aragorn, for the ultimate leadership, uh, you know, potential of Rohan. Again, Eoma leadership, Theorin leadership, Glorious Charge, and in addition to that, another 50% more damage from Aragorn is gonna cause your Rohiri marches to hit like an absolute truck. And lots of money for Bivellini. Has now uh, four trebuchet, going for the for the Firestone, going for the fifth trebuchet. Has some Tower Guards with heavy armor, but also potentially give them the Forge Bleeds. And again, the Tower Guards, their only mission is to protect the trebuchet from getting destroyed by the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches. Now the question is, who is he going to siege first, you know? I believe sieging the Gondor is going to be a bit more difficult, because there is a Ganna who can just literally walk to your trebuchet and blast them. So, this Rohan is mainly Rohirrim Arches. And Rohirrim Arches are super vulnerable against Firestone upgraded trebuchet. But the Tower Guards are not in position. There comes the Glorious Charge. Very smart move running through the trebuchet. Knowing that they have a minimum range. They cannot shoot when you are next to them. 
and destroying a lot of the trebuchet but Boromir get level 6 over there it's a very great power spike for Boromir because it only requires one more level for you to unlock the captain of Gondor now it's gonna turn and fight them the blast will be dodged quite nicely the micro is coming in clutch but there comes the lightning sword and the lightning sword is gonna hurt now he's now focusing down Gandalf there comes the heal but the burst and Theoden got even level 6 I told you you cannot underestimate the damage output from the Rohiri marches with triple leadership from Theoden, Ilma and Aragorn you just can't bro and look at this level six levels are just floating in and Rohan is getting stronger and stronger each level and this Rohirrim Archer level eight is gonna be something else I'm telling you that much and Rohan was able to gather so many power points from this battle as well and I keep repeating myself just because it's so important that power points are the key to victory in every game mode but especially additionally times 10 in free for all games you know Faramir, Faramir, Faramir is also level 5. So maybe it's gonna be the time for this Gondor to switch up to the combos a little bit. He has the tools for that. He has the tower guards to protect the combos against a potential trample from the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches. And remember, the Rohirrim Arches' biggest weakness are fire arrows. And you have like triple leadership for your army as well. Boro Farah plus Gandalf, you will be also quite strong. So also this Gondor player is going for the trebuchet. He will get a lot of money. The longer the game goes on, the more beneficial the marketplace upgrades will become so sieging will be difficult for rohan especially from this nearby settlements so you need to build the end mood maybe from this settlement over there you know but the army against army rohan will win every fight look at the, the gondor knights are getting literally melted they have even shields you have no chance just too much damage too much power but i like what this gondor player is doing trust me combos are super underrated and especially when you unlock the leadership from the brothers, Faramir and Boromir, you will be, uh, you know, good to go with, with the combos. You will be good to go. This army is looking super powerful, though. I mean, the thing that I'm worried about is the Glorious Charge. That's going to be the most scary part. Making them super tanky. And usually, you are always afraid of a potential blast of Gandalf. But when you use Glorious Charge, you just can stand and take it and tank it like a man. Like you don't die to that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the map is looking very good actually for the Rohan player. He's getting lots of money. Um, might also go for Gimli later on and Legolas. They only cost resources but no command points. So you can always... Look, the spears. It's annoying. Elvin Elma, double knight down. Two knights down in a second. No Gimli, no Legolas. Does he have command points available for more units? Um, yeah, he actually has. He can make like one more Rohirrim Archer. But I would recommend to go for a regular Rohirrim. Because I believe that he has already enough firepower for, on the Rohirrim Archer. He needs some sort of melee units to deal damage to the structures a bit faster. To tank uh, the Firestone upgraded trebuchet. Or to dive in to destroy them. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that all the factions remaining are actually FOL, Forces of Light. So there is not a real threat on the castle. And it's more about running through the map and fighting for the outer settlements, you know? But that's about to be changed because this Gondor is about to be ready, making the Tower Guards Archer combination. And has now fires on upgraded trebuchet with triple leadership. Um, I don't know, I didn't watch the game, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I can tell you what I think is gonna happen. This army is super underrated, and this army will be very difficult, much more difficult to be dealt with than you would expect. And the infantry can show you what they are made of, especially the Gondorians, um, as also Boromir is very close to level 7. That's pretty much like a glorious charge for the infantry, for Gondor, it will give you raw damage power, allowing you to melt through heroes and also units. But, I don't know, man. That's gonna be the absolute and ultimate battle of cavalry from Rohan with their biggest potential damage and armor leadership against the infantry of Gondor with their potential armor and damage leadership. And, of course, they've also... The, ooh, going for a trample. Put land to trample. Very good, great trample. Very great trample, but now when the trample is gone and the land has been covered, uh, he's focusing hardcore the Gandalf. Not much tight though, not much tight. 
Um, and Gloria Charge will go on cooldown. Ooh, hold on a second. He needs to cancel it. Oof, getting chunked a little bit. There comes the big heal. Ar Ooh, Boromir trying to fight Aragorn in a one-on-one. Swartman against Swartman. Are you out of your mind, Boromir? Nobody can ever do that, bro. That's just the king. You, you might be the captain of Gondor, but he's just the king of Gondor. He's king of Gondor and Rohan and of everything in <laughs> Middle-earth. He has a dedicated movie in the trilogy for himself. The movie is legit called The Lord of the Rings and The Return of the King, not Lord of the Rings and The Fellowship of Boromir, or Lord of the Rings and The Two Towers plus Boromir. There is not a movie for you. Oh my god, in the meantime though, this Rohan is getting absolutely shredded. I have not even seen that. Now he has no glorious charge, but he has a huge army. He might be sandwiched though, because this player is also rotating to the top side. So there is a Gimli. If you don't know, the Gimli's extra is capable of destroying or one-shotting a trebuchet. Ooh, what a fine shot. Oh my god, the heroes are diving in a little bit too deep into Eoma. Oh my god, he's running through the tower guards. Ooh, what a fine shot. Aragorn catching both. Aragorn without Andri Sword and... Maybe I was talking a little bit too much for about Aragorn. I mean, he might be the king, but he's still a human, okay? The other guy is legit an angel, bro. I mean, you are the king, okay, but you are a man. And the other guy is an angel, you know what I'm saying? He's a Maya, he's an Istari. They sent to protect your kind to the Middle Earth, to guide you to victory. Maybe I was talking too much about Aragorn and he felt cocky, you know? Felt cocky and overconfident. Oh my god, what is this trample into the tower guard line? Ooh, what a fine shot. I mean, losing Eoma hurts. Losing Aragorn hurts. And if this guy decides to attack this guy too, it's gonna hurt even more. So Bivolini has four power points. Two more away from getting to the Eagles. There is absolutely no counter from this player to the Eagles. So if he ever summons eagles on this guy, he will legit destroy everything. Kill Gandalf, kill eagles, kill heroes, kill tower guards. Um, Necromancer has actually collected a lot of power points because he did not go for the Great Company. He went straight up from the Gandalf the White into the Cloudbreak. That's the fastest way of unlocking the AOD, by the way. You go heal this plus Cloudbreak and then directly to the AOD. Ooh, we have, we have a battle over there. But the army of tower guards seems to be super durable especially in the lack of leadership from boromir and aragorn and that's in total 120 percent more damage leadership he's just missing you know Ooh, the blast wombo combo is the and i am the real wizard big hitting coming um imagine boromir didn't even, was not even around now the tower guards are gonna feed and also the trebuchet are gonna feed a lot of power points to Gandalf. He might even get to rank 8 out of that. He will get to rank 8 out of that. Getting uh, missing only two more ranks to unlock the ultimate power of Gandalf. That's gonna be the War of Power. Um and Nero, the Rohan player, has the potential to go for either Cloud Prig or the End Summon. End Summon would open the possibility for you to summon them right here on the spot, break the wall and go in. But he's trying to fish, fish some more power points by killing the remaining army of this Gondor player. But they are just way too tanky. The tower guards, they don't hide it quickly from the combo. But one thing you need to know about the combo archer, uh, tower guard archer combination of Gondor. The, the tower guards in the front are not acting the same way like pikemen of Isengard do. Okay? They don't have the revenge damage. They don't deal to you this crazy damage. They actually get knocked down when you trample into them. So they are not as powerful. Ooh, what a fine. Cloud Break has been used from Rohan. That's gonna slow the enemy army down. And even through heal, you can't get away. You are slowed for a very long time. Which will lead. And that's how you should use power points in BFME 1. Um, in a dream world, you wanna use them to get even more power points, okay? So your goal is to unlock the ultimate spell. That's going to be for the good factions, the Offbreakers, and for the evil faction, the Balrog. 
So if you can, and that's only possible with the good faction because you have to summon evil stones, um, you want to summon stuff to either win the game, deal heavy damage to the economy and to the base, or ideally do both of the mentioned ones, additionally uh, use power points to gain and collect even more power points, okay? And Boromir, almost rank 7. I mean, the four Gondor ability is going to be um, super deadly. Super deadly. This Boromir is only rank 3. This Faramir is also only rank 3. Gandalf has been revived from the, gra from the graveyard. Rank 7. And rank 8. I mean, I'm really worried about the potential of this army. As Faramir is leveling them up with the Captain of Gondor. Rank 3, rank 5, rank 3 and rank 3. So definitely not weak. Um, this Rohan's base is like open menu, you know, just like open house. All you can enter from every possible site. So he has to be super careful when he ever leaves the castle because there might be a possible invade. This guy has stopped making horses though. And he also just demolished the archer range. So I think he want to rebuild the stable. Just to be a bit more mobile because he knows he cannot keep the map. That's why the map is looking more in this color than in the dark green color. Because, you know, that's the advantage of having cavalry over infantry. Another part of the wall will be broken. Can Rohan commit to that? Remember, he has no end summon. And he's preparing an army to meet the Gondor army. And that's going to be a big, big fight. Ooh, the for Gondor, everybody is shining now. Everybody is glowing now. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Trampling though. They are lucky that they have glorious charge. It's, that's why they didn't die. Ganaf has to be careful. Focus on Boromir or Faramir. I don't know what's going on. But the trebuchet has been destroyed. That's what matters. That's the main thing you need to avoid. But in the luck of the glorious charge, you cannot damage or fight in a, in a man against man battle against this combo. So it's not going to be possible. Blasting. You have lots of battles, lots of wizards up on the field. He's gonna use Easter Light on this guy. He's gonna get chunked a little bit. Ooh, hold on a second. Will he catch him? He caught him. He got him. He got him. He got him. Oh my god, he couldn't finish him. Just before the last lightning was hitting the guy, the eagles took him down. Oh my goodness. Pivolini getting super close to the Offbreaker summon, by the way. Super close. Only four more power points missing. And as you can see, the eagles are farming more power points for him. Oh my god, they are diving in a little bit. This is a horrible fight to take for Rohan. They have even land leadership over there. They have crazy durability. And you cannot fight this without your uh, glorious charge. Even with glorious charge, I would be careful. Three power points needed for the for the offbreakers. Necromancer needs still five and a half power points. Remember, he was miles ahead of Pivellini, of the dark green Gondor player. But the combos are here putting and making the difference. Like mentioned before from me, they are underrated. When you have the brother leadership from Farami and Boromir, you should be good to go. Oh my god, is he going to be able to catch him? The elf will be caught by the wizard. And, you know. Again, you are humans, you are elves, you are no wizard, bro. Why would you try to f step up to the guy? Eight power points and Nero is at seven. He still needs also three power points. So the closest player to the to the offbreakers is Bivellini. He's also very healthy. B never mind that he's being siege actually. Oh my god, hold on a second. All this guy has to do is to dive in with this Knights of Condor. I mean, there is absolutely no defense. Look at the castle. He's towering up, but what this tower is gonna do? These two knights can wipe out the beast in a second. That will force him to retreat with all of his army. He needs to respect this push. The well is gonna be taken down. Ganaf is coming though. Ganaf is riding to Minas Tirith. Ooh, son! What a fine hit! What an absolutely fine hit. The only player who went for the Eagles was Bivolini, the dark green Gondor player. The other Rohan and Gondor players were actually for the Cloud Break. So eagles are the best hero killers from any summon, including, I mean, excluding, of course, EOD and also the Balrog. Balrog can just, phew, you know? But Balrog can, has not the, poten the potential to catch you. Whenever you are far away from the Balrog, you are safe. But you cannot get away from the eagles. Eagles can catch up to your, to your infantry hero on foot every single time. 
So Bivalini is getting super close to the AOD. Um, AOD doesn't mean immediately a victory, but it's a very important milestone to that. Um, whenever you unlock it, you need to be smart and also a little bit patient about when to use it and where to use it. In a dream world, you want to use your EOD always offensively. As you push, for example, to the Rohan base, you kind of force him into getting into his own castle to try to defend. And then you use EOD. After your EOD is gone, your army will be in the right spot to finish the, to get the job done and, you know, defeat the player. So if you use it here, of course, it will hurt him. But trust me, he will be able to manage to get away with his heroes. They won't die in a second. And by the time you reach to the side, he might repair the wall. He might, you know, get some more army upon the field. So it, it won't be as efficient. Three parts of the wall broken. He should respect that. All this guy has to do really. But he also has to... He has too many trebuchet. He's playing way too campy. Mm, that's wrong, in my opinion. I'm wasting too many um, command points into trebuchet, which he doesn't even use, you know? He is maybe respecting the potential invade a little bit too much. But in the most cases, is the offense the best defense. So a quarter power point needed for the EOD from Bivolini. And Rohan is trying to go to war. But you see the Gondoris player is going also to the war. Now it's a pretty much a similar situation. He will get the missing power points here. Now he has EOD. And now he's thinking, okay, you know what? Even if he goes into my base, I can summon EOD defensively. And my army is going to be able to finish him off. But Rohan can't let this happen. Ooh, he's going to ride into the EOD. Oh my god, bro. Glorious charge or not, it does not matter. You will die in a second. And the base is falling apart. EOD is going to get the job done. Heroes are falling. All the Rohan army has been absolutely slaughtered. Beside Aragorn. Aragorn is fighting a little bit. Can also kill the EOD. Does he also have the EOD? No, he is only missing one and a half power points. Uh, Boromir is going to be able to knock him down. There comes the Forgone durability from Boromir. He's saying, you are my king, my captain. But I will not die with you. I will kill you instead. Look at him dancing. Dance, 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 dance. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there, Boromir? I mean, only one power point missing, bro. But he won't get it. There is nothing yes to get the power points. And he will be defeated. Bivolini and Necromancer are the only two players remaining. There was a dude on the ground. Did cannot die again? Potentially. He's trying to go in. He want to finish him off. Um, with his trebuchet. But the Rohirrim summon in Eagles are coming one more time for the second time. And uh, he cannot get the job done. This player will not be defeated for now. Ooh, what a fine hit. Triple hit. Triple kill with one shot. With one shot, one opportunity. I mean, um, Necro is missing a power point. If he can get this power point, this, camp, this game can definitely turn around. And it's very much possible to get the missing power point. He needs only half a power point now. All right, the trebuchet is ready. I mean, this piece is still very vulnerable. I mean, Necro has actually the potential to win the game because his opponent, Bivolini, used the um, army of the dead to finish off the Rohan player, right? It's on cooldown for the next, I don't know, like three minutes. And that's enough time for you to get the power points you need and then summon them in a way you need to think about it though. How I can how can I win the fight and the game out of that? And I will explain you why and how. So when you destroy this trebuchet, you can completely ignore this army. Who cares about this army? You ride to his base. Does he have the money to repair the wall? He absolutely doesn't have the money to repair the wall. So you make like three, four knights of Gondor, you ride to his base. Summon EOD first when, when Ganav comes to defend. But you need to be a bit fast, you know? In this situation, he's even returning, so you can use EOD to kill the army, to kill the heroes, and destroy the citadel. But I don't know if two knights are gonna be enough. I would wait. Oh, now he has three knights. and But no Ganav. I don't know, man. You should just go. You should just go. Uh, he's gonna do this, right? 
Does Bivoli have the money to repair the wall? He doesn't. There comes the EOD, not in the best possible way though. EOD has not been used. Oh my god, he was still riding through them. Going for the Zita. Couldn't destroy any army though. What, what's going on? I must get to safety. Gonna have a super low. But this AOD didn't really do too much. And most of the knights I have been taken down. Gonna be able to destroy the workshop. Ooh. Beautiful catch with the lightning sword. Use use the use the bubble. Oh my god. Level 10. Level 10 Gandalf 2. Holy Quackamole! Well, the towers though, look, the towers were melting them, actually. What a fine hit. Bivolini has not that much money though. I mean, that's something, and he, Necromancer knows that Bivolini will have the EOD again and will leave the game. And the green, dark green gonna play him, takes it up in this free for all. Guys, let me know if you enjoy the free for all matches and if I should do more of them on this channel in the comment section down below. Leave a like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.